Here we go. Okay. All right, now Ooh. we're good. <laughs> um, welcome to worship here at First Presbyterian Church um, via Zoom today, since it's absolutely <laughs> cold outside and no one should be out there. Um, it's a pleasure to have you all joining us. And yeah, I don't have any announcements, do I? I Ash like Wednesday it. service. We are having an Ash Wednesday service. I can't remember what time because I don't have it in front of me. I think it's at seven, like seven. normal. Um, so yes, we are having an Ash Wednesday service. Bye. Anything else? Other than that, it's a normal week with food distribution on Thursday. That's right. A second Thursday. Food, yep, yep, food distribution again on Thursday. And assuming um, we stay in school this week, all of our activities will go on like normal. So, all right. Yeah. Seeing no more. <laughs> This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Please join me in the call to worship. The glory of God shines like a consuming fire. We have seen, we have seen the glory of God the glory of in the face, in the of, face Jesus Christ. of Jesus Christ. The voice of God thunders like a mighty storm. Out of, out, of, out, of, out of the clouds, God speaks. God speaks. God speaks. This, this is my, my beloved, beloved son. son. This is my beloved Listen son. To him, Listen to him. Listen to him.
please. Oh, let me try again. God alone is righteous. God alone is perfect. God alone is judge. Yet this holy, righteous God comes to us in love to save us. So rejoicing in God's grace, let us confess our sin first silently and then collectively. And praying together. I, I'm well after this week. Uh, God, God of glory, glory, beauty, and, and grace. We have tried to hide from you, to hide our faces, to hide our, our sin. Yet you, yet you have, have never been your love for us. We have tried to search for you in, in temples. temples. In clouds, in clouds, on mountain mountaintops, yet, yet you, you have already revealed yourself to us, to us in, the face, in the face of Jesus Christ. Forgive, Forgive us, us and, transform and transform us so that our lives may shine with your, with your glory, beauty, beauty and, and grace through Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ our, Lord. our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our God comes and does not keep silent. God speaks to us with grace and love, saying, You are my beloved child. This is indeed the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be to God. Amen. Amen. Since God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Peace. 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 Oh, I can unmute myself. You can. Okay. Perfect. All right, it is Valentine's Day. And although you might not tell it um, because of what we're wearing, you can look at the screen and see lots of people in red and pink and purple to celebrate love. And love, I see Farah's face right front and center. Love, Farah, is a pretty big emotion, right? It's not something small that we kind of tied away. Love is something that we can show big and wide, whether it's a silly gesture. Uh, Bob, it's not love. <laughs> Pastor Dana says that's not love. Or if it's a hug on a bad day, or if it's a kind word. So Valentine's Day isn't just about chocolate and flowers and wonderful gifts, although sometimes those are nice. But Valentine's Day is really about love. Most importantly, God's love and sharing God's love with everyone you meet, Dempsey. So today, I want you to work to love the people you're with. Maybe that means, yeah, Dempsey, you're right. That smile shows you love people. Yep. Maybe that means you do something the first time you're asked today. Maybe it means that you help your brother or your sister or your gaga and your papa or your mom and dad. Maybe it means you help get stuff ready to share at school tomorrow, to be a good friend and show God's love that way. Maybe it means that you take time to pray extra hard for the February person you're praying for through the church. Love can show up in all sorts of different ways. So I hope today on Valentine's Day, but also every single day, you do what you can to show God's love with the whole world. Because the more of us who show and share God's love, the better this world will be. And we get to be a part of making that change. So let's pray really quick that we can all, big or little, share God's love today and every day. Let's pray. Yep, perfect, Dempsey, just like that. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, because you love us, we get to love others. So on this day set aside for love, 
help us to do everything in our power, whether we're a little disciple or the oldest disciple among us, to share your love, to share your grace, to share your light. Help us to share your love so that this world knows more about you and becomes more like you, how you wanted it to be. And together, all God's children said, amen. Our scripture today comes from 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Um, let us be attentive to a word from the Lord. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho, and the company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? He answered, yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you, you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. As they both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet... If you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped at his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts here today be holy and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Transfiguration Sunday. It, it's uh, it's an odd day. Uh, I always I always struggle with the transfiguration. Um, especially when talking about Jesus, because that's what we usually talk about. Uh, but it's it's a day that marks the end of Epiphany and begins our, our, our start into Lent, because the following transfiguration, we have Ash Wednesday. And, and it, 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 it's a definite marker in, in the change of, of Jesus' appearance, but also in the change of lives. It, it always seems like a bit of an odd placement. Um, it, it, Jesus... Excuse me a second. This isn't working for me. I can't not look at you all and look off to the side of the screen. Let me do that. There we go. We're used to hearing the story of Jesus uh, up on the mount, and he ascends, and he changes shining and beautiful, and his clothes are shining and beautiful, and the disciples are, are totally freaked out and scared, but they want to keep that moment forever. They want to they want to pause and keep that moment as he is up in the clouds with Moses and Elijah. And, and, and in their fear, they they try to hold on to something and Jesus reminds them not to be afraid. But this year we're going to talk about Elijah and, and Elisha and, and the powerful relationship that they have, the, the powerful relationship that I hope that we can replicate in our own lives with other people, that, that relationship that we can look towards to see who we're supposed to be in, in this world. Um, 
Elijah mentors Elisha. Elijah is a powerful prophet. Elisha, the son of, of a wealthy landowner, uh, Shaphat, um, he becomes Elijah's disciple and eventually his successor. And his life is changed. And see, we, we think about transfiguration as magnificent, as Jesus on that mount being transformed, glowing and shining and uh, something almost unattainable. But transfigure just translates to change of figure. Transfiguration is something that should be happening to us always. It's part of our process. So today's text finds us in moments of deep transfiguration between Elijah. It, and that transfiguration doesn't, it isn't just relegated to that whirlwind and the chariots of fire at the end, but it, it's, it's, the, it's the whole process. Um, so we have Elisha and Elijah traveling. They've journeyed far. They, together they, they have done God's work. Um, proclaiming God, prophesying about God and, and the new world and the, and the new way to be for all of Israel and for all people. And Elijah comes to the end of his time. And, and as they travel, these last three spots, uh, Gilfath, Bethel, and Jer um, the Jordan, well, four spots, all four of those spots are sacred, holy spots for the people of Israel. Each time they travel them, each stop this sacred spot, prophets come out, things are happening. And Elijah says, Elisha, you just stay here. I'm going to go on. And Elijah's like, no, I'm going with you. Each time, nope, I'm coming further. Each time to another piece until they are fully separated. They cross the Jordan. And, and Elijah says to Elisha, says, what can I what do you want? What can I do for you as my time comes to a close? And Elisha says, I want a double portion of your spirit. I want a double portion of your goodness, of your kindness, of the way you've changed the world around you. I want, I want to impact the world double the way you were. He doesn't ask for the riches or even the mantle. He, he doesn't ask for, for anything but the ability to prophesy and change the world. He wants to be transfigured, to be more like the incredible prophet that Elijah is. Well, Elijah says, that's a hard thing to ask, and, and it's not really up to me. So if God chooses, essentially, to let, let you see me ascend, then you'll have it. If not, then you won't. Well, he gets to see it. Um, and it is such a powerful relationship that... The morning is, is a familial morning in, in Jewish tradition where he rips his clothes, he tears his garments in half. And um, it, it, is, it is such a, a profound, extravagant thing to do, to tear his garments and to fall prostrate and to cry out. His life has been transfigured by the life of Elijah. Elisha's life is so changed because of, Elijah discipling him, mentoring him, loving him. There's so many layers to this text um, to talk about on Transfiguration Sunday. Um, it, it's, it, it's hard just to pick one, but I really want to focus on that word transfigured, changed. Changed. We're all supposed to be changed over and over again. Um, our journey through life does that to us. Um, as people of faith, we should always be looking to, 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 to be morphing and to be changing, not to ever be stagnant and sedentary and complacent in it. Um, I'm not the same person I was five years ago when I got here. I'm not the same person I was 10 years ago. I'm, not the, I'm certainly not the person I was 17 years ago at 18 when I got to college and made some really great choices. The journey of life has transfigured. We can maybe even put a different word in there and say has evolved me. I have evolved into a different person, changed from life experiences. Um, and we should be doing that. We should be, be being made new. We should be learning and growing through scripture. We should be learning and growing through study alongside of one another. 
one of the biggest dangers we have is to, to, to be complacent, to be sedentary and to think that this is done. Um, I, I, I've talked about it several times recently, but we as faithful people have been convinced at some point that all we had to do was just accept Jesus. And, and that was, that was the, that was the game. It's now just access to heaven and Hey, there we go. Whereas that's just simply the jump off point. That's just the beginning, but it is, it is, it is that acceptance is the beginning of a movement of a lifetime of growth and change towards something. So that comes with work, with dedication, with discovery, with seeking and learning. It comes from delving into scripture or the creeds or theologians or, or the words of fathers and mothers of faith. It, it, it is to take time to explore things inside and outside of our faith to explore things of the natural world that intrigue us, to explore things and times and talents and see where they lead us. And to, to, to look at the deeper questions and not shy away from the hard moments of why and how. It comes in, in prayer and time with God and time with one another and good moments and bad moments. It's the journey. Elisha very well could have stayed as a the wealthy son of a merchant, yet he disciples, he, he changes his whole life under Elijah to, to a prophet, to a, to a profoundly important prophet in the history and life of Israel. So it, it our journey of, of faith and life is not just finished the moment we say, yay, Jesus, it just begins. And it's the moments of life, the good ones and the bad ones, they transfigure us, they change us, they morph us into new and different moments. And it's not just the big grand moments, the, the mountaintop wild moments, but it is also the simple moments. And it's not just the moments that change us, but it's the people we meet along the way that change us. It's the relationships we build. Elisha's life is transfigured and changed in incredible ways because of Elijah. And that's why he wants to have a double portion of Elijah's spirit. Because, because that discipleship, because that relationship forever changes him. It forever changes the people around us. Because of that investment that Elijah placed in Elisha. In, in 93... Charles Barkley got himself in a little bit of trouble because he, he came out with a, it was a Nike ad. Some of you may remember it, but in essentially, well, the quote goes, I'm not a role model. I'm not paid to be a role model. I'm paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. Parents should be role models. Just because I dunk a basketball doesn't mean I should raise your kids. And there's some truth in that. And there's a complete miss of the point. David Robinson, the Admiral, lost his mind over this quote. In fact, David Robinson literally almost never said anything when it came to the media, and he lambasted Barkley for this quote. He caught heat. Barkley caught heat for this um, because his life is in the public eye. It's seen. Whether he wanted it or not, he's a role model. Whether he thought about it, how he played or what he said, kids were watching. I watched Barkley. I loved Barkley. I I love that he wreaked havoc. There was a there was an enjoyment of it. I remember watching him play. Um, I paid more attention to how he rebounded the ball than how he dunked it. But that's really neither here nor there. Um, I even remember going out of my way to buy his his video game called Barkley Shut Up and Jam. Um, now. If you, if you watch Barkley now, his life has changed in incredible ways, and he's really taken that, that role model piece on, but he still stands by his comments. Um, he stands by those comments because he really believes those closest are the ones who should be the role models. Um, now, I know we all have people who we looked up to as kids. Uh, I, for one, always wanted to grow up, and you all are going to laugh, to be the ultimate warrior. Yes, the, the, the guy with the face paint and the, 
fluorescent bright underwear for lack of better terms wrestling in the wwf um i loved the ultimate warrior uh as a kid i would run around uh, okay my wife is giving me a look you can't see her i may or may not have an ultimate warrior coffee mug uh maybe an action figure i love i still love the ultimate warrior he's amazing he was amazing um but he was wild he was big he was strong um he always fought against the bad guys he never was a heel he was never they, they he would never agree to be the heel he he had this insanity about him um but it was always it was fun as a kid to watch and and um i've recently found out not just how much i enjoyed him as, as a wrestler but now i've found more out about his life and his character and how much of that impacted the people around him and how he expected people to be a certain way their ethics their their code their um and, and he would push them to be better um i always wanted to be the ultimate warrior now my wife i'm gonna tell on her she told me she always wanted to be lisa lobo hey you know WNBA star of course but see that's where kids look that's where we we as young people look at a conversation with a, a church member just recently about Tyree Kill, about how the cheetah is just, he just plays the game and it's, um, and he entertains and he's got this quiet, good character. Um, but as I've transfigured, as my life's changed, who I want to be like has changed. I mean, yeah, I still want to be ultimate warrior. Who doesn't? That sounds really fun. Um, but Barkley was right. Barkley was right. Yes, those people make an impact on our lives, but it's interesting who I want to model my life after now. The Reverend Dr. William Nottage Tacey. The Reverend Dr. Mark Douglas. The Reverend Dr. David Bartlett. My grandparents. I look to those people and I want a double portion of what they offer to the world. The people who willfully invested in my life. The people who who displayed a life of faith and goodness to follow. The people who, who took me under their wing. I, I, I want to be like my grandpa and see the good in absolutely everybody because that's the reality of who that, that guy is. Because if it's not, he wouldn't talk to every single human being on the planet as if they were his best friend. He doesn't care. My grandma doesn't take him shopping for a reason because she'll never get out of the store. It's the truth. I wanna be generous beyond my means like my grandmother. I wanna be exploring and seeking to understand my faith and, and my own work and action as Mark Douglas as a, as a Christian ethicist. And if I could have a double portion or a half a portion of whatever it was that David Bartlett had, where you walked into his office or his classroom and you knew you were loved and you knew you were going to learn and you knew you were going to be pushed and you knew you were cared about on a deeper measure, I'll take it. So we ask ourselves, who's our Elijah? Who is it that we look to? Who's our Elijah that... Elijah, that, that in this journey transfigures us, that changes us. But then maybe the question really should be is, who are we Elijah to? Who are the Elishas looking at us? Who are the Elishas that are wandering and watching and seeing and journeying alongside of us, hearing the things we say, watching the things we do? Because this is where Barkley was right and wrong. Because however big your voice is, whether it's an immediate impact in a small town or if it's on a global scale, people watch. People hold you up. People see and discover. And when we invest down back into those lives, when we make our energy positive and good and we share the faith and we walk alongside of them, we, we are transfiguring lives. Our lives are transfigured and we are transfiguring them. As a people of faith, that's our call. In Matthew, it's the Great Commission to go forth and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Lord, making disciples, it says. Making disciples. 
not converting, but making disciples. That means investing. That means loving. That means lifting up. That means correcting. That means holding accountable. That means dragging, kicking, and screaming into the next thing because sometimes we just know this is going to be transfiguring and life-changing. It's an investment. It's an engagement with others in spite of everything else. When we live in this individualistic culture, it's not just those in our immediate circles, but it goes well beyond. It goes well beyond that because when we go on mission trips with youth, they see youth from other places. They see leaders from other places. And then those people in that place where we are doing that work see us. And lives are changed. Our voices, whether we know it or not, whether we accept it or not, our voices in our lives carry further than we can even imagine. And they impact others in powerful ways. We have the opportunity to give a double share of the divine spirit we have all been given. And to transfigure lives as ours are transfigured. To give hope and new life and speak that into all of the world. It starts small, but it's a ripple and it grows bigger. May we all be blessed with those people who change us and with the opportunities to offer that same change and new life to all those around us. Amen. Having heard the word read and proclaimed, I invite you all to join together in saying what it is we believe. Saying together, I believe in God, the Father, maker of heaven and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, conceived by the Holy Ghost, by the Holy Ghost, suffered under the suffered was crucified and buried, third day, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God. From the of the just to which of the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church. The community We can try, yeah. yeah. Are there any, uh, as we come to this time of prayer, are there any joys or concerns? If you raise your hand, like make sure I can see it up in front of the computer, um, if you do have one, and I'll scroll through. And see. Okay. Coming back through one more time. Okay. Seeing seeing no more or none right now. Um I don't have the bulletin, so I can't do everybody's names, but we'll Oh, we'll just roll. Uh, do you remember the Schaefer's with Tate? Yeah. It was his half birthday yesterday. Um, and they've got some disheartening news as they try to figure out what steps could come, what the next steps could be. So remember the Schaefer's. Yep. Absolutely. Anything else you can think of? No, nothing. Nothing else I can either. All right. Well, let us then now go to God in prayer. Holy God, we are grateful for those people that you place in our lives, for the Elijahs who move and give and dedicate to us in ways that are powerful and life-changing. We're grateful for the people that you place in our lives that invest in us, invest in us with good hopes for the future, that share with us, that push us, that hold us accountable, that drive us forward to change us, to be more faithful disciples in you. God, open our eyes, our ears, our lives to those 
that we can return that double portion to. Those that we can share this life with, the mercy, the grace, the love. Those that we can offer up and give new hope and new life to. Give us the strength and courage and the willingness, the openness to invest in others. To give and to share, to love and to live as a people united in and through you. Oh God, we pray, we pray today for those who are sick. For those who need your healing. We lift them up before you now. Oh God, may your healing spirit enfold them, making them well. And for those who are caregivers and caretakers, may you give them sound minds and steady hands, giving them wisdom to care and to comfort. Oh God, for those who know loss this day, May you remind them that though this life comes to an end, it is not the end, but there is life eternal found in you. Oh God, for those who struggle with mental illness, with depression, with anxiety, with hopelessness. May they know your mercy and love, and they know your grace, and may they never be felt, may they never feel that they are alone again, and know that you are always with them. Holy God, on these cold, blistery days, we pray for warmth, we pray for hope, we pray for new life, and we know that we have a call to be your hands and feet, so give us a boldness and a courage to clothe, to feed, and to offer new life and transfiguration to a world that is in desperate need of it. Pray this all in the name of Christ who stands with us this day and every day, teaching us to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done. 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 on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us the best us day, our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, power and glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. As we come to this time of offering. Um, I remind you all we do online offering through Givelify app. Um, but most of all, I want us to remember that we do not give out of abundance, but we do give out of our rich and deep faith. Sweet Coming for to carry me home, sweet love, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry. I looked over Jordan, and what did I see? Coming for to carry me. for to carry me 
That's why I sing Swing low Sweet Chariot Coming for to carry me My brothers and sisters, go from here to love and serve the Lord, to, to have your hearts filled and changed, and to go out and change and fill hearts with the grace and mercy and love of God. Go from here and go the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Bethine. You're welcome. When is that?